Good morning. It's 10 o'clock, so we're going to get started this morning. I've started the recording to make sure we've got it documented and we can post it once this webinar has concluded. You are in Federal Fiscal Office Hours for September 2024. We're glad that you can join us. My name's Jeanette Kirk, and I'm the Chief of Federal Programs here at the department. Our team members will introduce themselves as we go through our slides. Um, again, we have our Q&A chat box available. So if you have questions as we go along, feel free to populate them in the chat. And then there's an opportunity at the end of um, our presentation to share any questions you have, and we can answer them there also. So our agenda this morning, um, we have some reminders, some friendly reminders for you, some information regarding ESA reservations, upcoming professional learning, and then we have some team-specific updates. And then again, just a reminder that if you have any um, pressing topics or um, elements that you would like us to cover in these office hours, please reach out to any one of us on this call and we'll be sure to update that and include them in future office hours. We wanna make sure that these sessions are purposeful and meaningful to you. Um, so if there are things that you would like us to cover or you would like more information or professional learning on, please do reach out to us and let us know. So some friendly reminders to kick us off. Time and effort documentation is to certify after the fact that time is spent engaged in allowable activities under the federal program. Time and effort documentation shouldn't certify payroll or how the staff member is being paid. An, ex an example of that is I, Sally Jones, certify that I was paid 100% with Title I funds. That's an example of an affirmation statement regarding payroll and not the actual time and effort of the employee. We do have some time and effort templates on the ESEA state resources page. And just a reminder that they are actually templates and they need to be amended and tweaked, changed um, to fit the SAU's needs. So use the template and then amend as you need to. As you may be aware, we do have Brewman come in to do some training with us on the changing um, universal grant guidance. So some of those policies that they may be reviewing during that time are, are written travel reimbursement policies, procurement procedures, procurement standards, and written equipment policy and procedures. So you may wanna just take a quick look at your local district level to see if you have those policies in place. They should be in place. They are written required policies and maybe just pull them out because there may be some revisions that will be needed to them based on new guidance that is coming down the pike. And then our final reminder here in this slide is to invoice, invoice, invoice. We have a good majority of grants that are have expiring timelines. So we wanna make sure that you can fully utilize all of your funds within those timeframes. Um, so if you have questions regarding which grants are expiring, what funds are available when, please make sure you reach out to your program contact and they'll be more than willing to help you with any of those questions. Good morning, to... I am Maisha Asha. I'm the fiscal coordinator for federal emergency grants. So in this slide, we would like to um, remind you that uh, the funds that are expiring on September 30th can be obligated until September 30th. However, be mindful of the requirement when utilizing these funds for purchase services, because these for services must be rendered before 9-30-2024. Travel and coursework must be completed before 9-30. These requirements may differ for adult education. So we would like you to request to or encourage you to reach out to Megan teacher if you have any question. So uh, in this uh, slide, we would like to uh, draw your attention to the funds that are yet to be reimbursed for each of the listed grants. We are aware that um, for many SAUs, these funds have been obligated and expended. 
However, uh, reimbursement has not yet been sought from the department. So we therefore encourage you all to submit the invoice re uh, reimbursements as soon as possible. We also want to draw your attention to the performance report timelines that are currently in play. As you can see for IDEA, um, that performance report is past due. So reimbursements are currently paused until those year-end reports are received by the IDEA team. Again, if you have questions regarding performance report due dates or elements within the report performance report, we encourage you to reach out to your program contact um, to make sure you're uh, fully aware of deadlines, any questions that you have. So uh, in this uh, slide, we would like to um, uh, reiterate that main DOE allocated about 16 million state reservation funds to support the projects like Teach May, uh, Evidence-Based Literacy, uh, Pre-K Expansion, and the Summer Learning and Enrichment. This chart shows how many is remaining in each of these project funds. So grant award notification or GAN for each of, under each of these grants has the detailed information about the invoicing timeline and requirements. However, we would like you to encourage, uh, you know, invoice us as soon as possible. We're excited to share that the Broomine Group will be joining us in October for one and a half days worth of professional learning. With um, They're going to outline the changes to the Uniform Grant Guidance and EDGAR coming into effect on October 1, which is next week, which is hard to believe. They're going to share updates regarding those requirements and regulations. The cost of the training is free for any SAU member. And registration is required. There are only 200 spaces available. Registration is currently at about 150. 43 people. Um, so we do have some space available. It's strongly recommended for business managers to attend and will also be beneficial for federal program managers. Um, we can provide the link in the chat if you're interested in attending, but please do register in advance. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tyra Corson and I am the ASCA uh, fiscal coordinator. I have some reminders on the slide. The FY25 GANs have additional terms and conditions. If your SAU receives an award for a grant greater than 250,000, then you must invoice monthly. Separate GANs are distributed for each award within the ESEA consolidated application. The threshold is set for each award, not a consolidation of all awards. The FY23 ESEA GANs have been updated to reflect the tidings amendment waiver received for an additional year to utilize the funds. The tidings amendment waiver impacted the FY23 ESEA consolidated grants and the FY24 tier three school improvement funds for schools that did not exit tier three status in 23-24. Please be mindful that the main DOE may be denied tidings amendment waivers in the future. Therefore, invoicing for expenses timely is crucial to receiving federal funds in the future. The FY24 performance report opens early October, where reporting expenses from the substantial approval date of your FY24 ESEA application through 930 24 is required. The, re the performance report will not be approved if the reported expenditures do not align with the reimbursement requests. The FY22 um, application closeout report needs to be completed before the FY24 performance report will receive approval. To fill out the closeout report, you must go into the FY22 application. FY25 fall monitoring uh, submission window closes on October 1st. If your SAU is being monitored this year, please make sure to upload evidence and submit by October 1st 
for the fall monitoring collection window closes. So here are some updates for uh, federal emergency relief grants. So uh, evidence-based literacy grant, ARP ESR funding, and ARP HCY1 and HCY2 is expiring or the period of performance is ending on September 30th. And uh, with that, I mean, the obligation we can, the obligation has to be made by September 30th for these grants. Main DOE and SAU must close out all the invoicing by December 30th, 2024. Uh, please submit the invoices as early as possible prior to that date, December 30th, for proper processing of these invoices. Any funds not invoiced by December 30th, 2024 will no longer be accessible. Good morning, my name is Jody Truman from the Child Nutrition Office. Um, just a couple of reminders for you. Um, again, the, the MEFS revenue codes for the Child Nutrition funds are located um, on the Child Nutrition website and I have posted the link um, in the chat for you. And I just wanna make sure everybody uh, remembers that federal and state of Maine reimbursement must be separated when reporting. Um, you have seen some that are combining both federal and Maine together, and um, we can't do that. It needs to be separated. So please make sure you are referencing the MEFS revenue codes um, for correct reporting. Also, uh, in SAMS.gov, your UE, UEI number, uh, we are, I'm reviewing uh, the child nutrition sponsors now, and I am seeing some that are no longer active, that don't have an active registration. Um, but So please log in to SAM.gov and make sure that your um, district is um, does have an active registration. I believe those renew yearly. Um, you will be getting an email from me um, if your UEI number is, is, um, is not an active registration. Also upcoming, uh, the our annual financial report um, is due October 1st. We have 17 districts that have not completed that. Um, so please, if you could work with your um, child nutrition office uh, to get that completed and submitted um, by then. And that is it for me, thank you. And I am gonna read the IDA. Uh, FY24 year end reports are due October 30th, 2024 for the period of 7 1 2023 through 6 30 2024. Sections A and B will, will not be available until the majority of SAUs have uploaded their fourth quarter financials and they have been uh, migrated. The rest of the report can be completed and submitted. If SAUs are not meeting, um, MOA and excess costs, Main DOE will send work, send word and work with the SAU to enter allowable exceptions. FY25 ID applications are due for approval on 9 15 2024. Fall 2024, fall monitoring cohort, cohort first. Submission of evidence due of 9 30, 2024. Second submission of evidence due is on 10 11, 2024. Third submission of evidence is due on 11 4, 2024. SAU is being fiscally monitored. We're notified. Please reach out if you have any questions. Questions related to that IDEA slide should be directed to Colleen O'Neill or Barbara McGowan. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Megan Dichter, State Director of Adult Ed. Um, just a couple of updates in previous office hours. I mentioned that our grants were being moved to Grants for Me. They are now officially in Grants for Me, both the APLA and IELCE grants um, and the fiscal agents have access and first invoices are due by 10-31-24.
Hi, good morning. My name is Emily Doughty, and I'm representing the Career and Technical Education team today. We just have a few reminders. Our industry, industry standard grants, um, we are continuing to review 2025 applications, and that is happening on a rolling basis. You should not be spending down any funds until your application has been approved, and our team will be reaching out uh, to let you know once that has been approved in grants for me. Um, we host weekly office hours, and those are held by Melissa Sherwood every Tuesday from 3 to 3.30, and we are doing those on Teams. So if you're a business manager or work directly with CTE, you're welcome to attend and answer any questions. This is definitely more of a drop-in office hours, and we're happy to help however we can. Um, a few upcoming deadlines, September 30th, FY25 industry standard grants, as well as middle school grant applications are due. September 30th, we also have as the last day to spend down your 24 Perkins and industry standard grant funds. Uh, November 30th is our last day to submit invoices for reimbursement under FY24 Perkins and industry standards grants. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Melissa Sherwood and her contact information I can put in the chat. Good morning, everybody. I'm Christian Thor, uh, MA at the Office of School and Student Support. I am the program or grant manager for Stronger Connections and support the EASE grant. Uh, the EASE grant is entering its year three as of 1-1-25. Uh, we're working diligently to uh, follow Jeanette's friendly reminders to improve our budget tables with uh, better definitions, our travel policies, and the personnel benefits documentation required, which has been not existed as of yet, um, or at least on our end, we're unaware. So we're going to make those improvements. We also have uh, started a new uh, scholarship grant for uh, a university, three universities applied, uh, thinking about $170,000 support. Students currently enrolled in the uh, mental health programs throughout the state. Uh, and this grant is currently workflow with funding available ASAP as spending must be completed by 12-30-24. On the Stronger Connection side, uh, we have year one reporting corrections are going to be finalized by 10-2-2024. And we have a project that we started for entitled ECHO uh, that begins on 10-2 and runs monthly throughout the school year. It's just an opportunity for um, people working in districts to meet as a community and discuss uh, issues and opportunities to make better connections in their community. That concludes the presentations from each of the team members and updates. Are there any additional questions that folks on the call would like to pose to um, the subject matter experts on the call at the moment? Jeanette, we do have one in the chat from Tiffany. Um, is there a performance report that needs to be submitted for Stronger Connections? There was a year one report that needed to be submitted. It wasn't official, but it was completed. There are some revisions I'm going through that needs to be due by next week, but it's all being taken care of. And then Wendy, if you can direct your question for IDEA to Pauline, I think that would be helpful. Um, and we can make sure that that is also shared with the rest of the group. Um, Lisa, did you have a IDEA coding question? You can't see where you can code function 2130 with 12470. Again, we'll make sure Colleen gets that question um, and she can follow up with you directly. Um, yep, no problem. Can one of the team grab those two questions and we can get those over to Colleen and make sure we get an answer? Someone does I can mind? do that. Thank you, Emily. The slides will be available, Wendy, online. So generally what we do at the conclusion of this, we'll forward them to our communications team. We'll post the slides and the recording um, on our federal pro programs page. 
And then generally um, we send that link to Maine ASBO to Joanne Allen and she can distribute. Um, but we're also looking to try and see if we can find a mechanism whereby we can disseminate information to business managers in general, because we recognize not all business managers may, might be members of Maine ASBO and we want to make sure that we're reaching all. Um, so we're going to meet with our um, DOE school finance team to see if we can grab all of the business manager emails and we'll send that link out. And then we will also send an e-blast via Grants for Maine um, that will also contain the links. So we'll try and hit you up on multiple platforms. Any other questions for the team? Here's a list of the office hours. We'll make sure those links, those links are active in the slide deck. So once they're in a PDF, you should be able to access them. If you want to register for them, a good majority of them at the moment are drop-in, especially the federal emergency relief programs. They're focusing very heavily on invoicing at this time. So if you have questions regarding any invoices, any backup documentation that you're required to submit, they are drop-in office hours. You can re receive support um, regarding any invoice then or any other questions that you have. So a lot of them are standing office hours. So feel free to join those. And then we've got um, our RC team, special services team that will be providing a link for their upcoming office hours. So we'll make sure that that gets updated. We have all of the contacts for the programs that you see on the screen that have shared updates today. So in a quick, easy snapshot, you have everyone's contact information at your fingertips. That's available here. And then again, you can always find us online using the following platforms. And if there are no additional questions, we can end our webinar today and we hope to see you next month. Have a great rest of your day.